you're probably more familiar with magnetic fields than you realize. If you have a compass and a map, you can use the Earth's magnetic field to help you find your way. You've probably also seen what a magnetic field looks like. Drop iron filings around a bar magnet, and the field shows itself as a series of lines. If you take the filings away, you can still get an idea of what the field looks like by flying a tiny compass around the magnet. The compass points in the direction of the magnetic field, allowing you to draw its shape. But how do you find out what a planet's magnetic field looks like? You basically do the same thing. However, instead of flying a simple compass around the planet, NASA scientists use satellites carrying a much more sensitive device called a magnetometer. Mounted far away from the spacecraft, a magnetometer uses electric currents to measure the magnetic field of the planet. By flying this electronic compass around the planet, scientists can draw an accurate model of what its magnetic field looks like. And magnetometers have helped scientists discover more than just the shape of the Earth's magnetic field. Other planets in our solar system, such as Jupiter, have magnetic fields that are similar to ours. The Sun also generates its own magnetic field that affects the entire solar system. But not every planet in our solar system has a magnetic field. For example, we've discovered that, unlike Earth, Mars doesn't have a global magnetic field at all. Instead, it has small pockets of local magnetic fields. But after all said and done, even with all the advanced technology, the most amazing thing is that we've made all of these discoveries using something that's, essentially, an upgraded compass. I'm Gwyn Collinson from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, and I'm here to tell you today about the electric wind of Venus. Just as every planet has a gravity field, we think that every planet has a weak electric field. So we went looking for Venus's electric field, and boy oh boy did we find it. It turns out that Venus's electric field is at least five to ten times stronger than at Earth. It's a monster of a force. It can rip heavy things like oxygen straight out of the upper atmosphere and send them kicking and screaming off into space. So this really changes the way we have to think about planets, because it turns out that planets can lose heavy things like oxygen to space entirely through electrical forces in their ionospheres. This is something that's really important if we want to go looking for exoplanets, for habitable planets around other stars. It is no good having conditions perfect for an ocean and an atmosphere that you might want to breathe if some invisible force is going to come along and rip it all off into space. Only understanding how atmospheres evolve can we try and understand how we got here. We don't really know on Earth why you get thunderstorms at the rate we get them. We look at Saturn, they're very infrequent. We had heard the lightning on the radio instrument on Cassini, uh, but you, you, you hear static uh, on, on the radio signal, but you can't uh, pinpoint where it's coming from. We had to use a synthetic noise because the uh, actual noise that the radio instrument is, is picking up is beyond the human ear. So, so we, we picked a noise that sounded like an electrical discharge. In other words, a big spark. That's what lightning is.
In a squid magnetometer, the sample is moved through an external magnetic field. A pickup coil links to a superconducting detector loop with parallel Josephson junctions. A magnetic flux from the moving sample interrupts the superconducting loop. An applied bias current reestablishes the superconducting loop and indicates the magnetism of the sample. The first step is to refill the squid device with liquid helium at 4.2 kelvins. A tube yeah, is dumb. used to siphon helium dumb. from the doer into the device. Dumb. The computer reports the progress of the filling. The rate should be slow at about 2.5% per minute and it is filled to 90%. To contain the helium, a positive gas pressure is applied from the external tank. The fill tube is removed, being careful to keep its ends level. The field cooled FC line shows the sample magnetism with an applied 500 OE field as the temperature range is scanned. For superparamagnetic nanoparticles, the process is irreversible and the FC and zero FC curves separate. A number of other curves can be generated. The magnetic moment plotted against the magnetic field is not a straight line for a superparamagnetic material. This curve shows a ferromagnetic property with a hysteresis loop.